number four here in this GSL Dota's final season one. That's right. The new year. It is going great so far. We've had some amazing games by both players. Yep. Genius and DRG. By the way, we have the GSL trending worldwide. Guys, continue to tweet about it. It's hashtag not enough. GSL. It's not enough. Keep hashtagging it. Keep it going. Guys, yeah, keep that worldwide trending going. Show the world that, in fact, Justin Bieber's birthday matters to no one but his parents. It's all about the GSL. <laughs> that is the greatest joke you have told in GSL history, or Joseph. True joke, too, right? Game number four. Does Genius have enough cards up his sleeve? I don't know. Faceless. That's why his sleeves are still long. DRG, though, bringing his sleeves up. It's time for a little Zerg elbow crease in game number four on a Tomb Valley, a map that DRG historically hates. Yeah, that all in. Well, that, which, I guess it's not really, it's like a timing attack. It's not really an all in. The uh, Blink Soccer. He could technically, if he did enough damage, and then it ended Dude, there. The game goes on. We but can call it whenever we want, but he mind tricked DRG in one of the most powerful in slightest ways. If he does that on the ladder, he probably loses, guys. Yeah, well, because on the ladder, his opponent is probably so stupid that he just doesn't even and take into is, account a fourth guess. It's still a Grandmaster in Korea, so it's actually like a very smart, great player. But yeah. this is the type of stuff that works against like DRG, Nestine. I'm not, not even, I'm not even saying Lean Off. Actually, actually, maybe you're right. Lean has a different Nestine. style. It's not brain based, it's, it's pure power based. Yeah, it's raw. Strength. He's just like a rawly skilled. Nerd god, you know. Whereas DRG and Nesty are unbelievable in their decision making. All right, game number four. If DRG loses this, it's gonna be hell. Genius loses this. Well, then we just go on to an even score. Mm -hmm. DRG, tongue action. Here's uh, well, DRG with some cheek action. Genius with some tongue action. Normally it's the other way around. Yeah. All right, so let's go. Zerg versus Protoss, DRG against Genius in the GSL CODES Finals. In the upper left, in the red, we have our player, very tricky, very tricky, very sly, excuse me. His ID is... MVP Genius. So many nerds. Everywhere. Esports is real. You better believe that. Leave it in the bottom red. We have our Zerg player. Solid as steel, but so far has been tricked twice. His ID is MVP from Legu. John Legu, who we refer to as DRG. That's his ID is generally is. DRG is uh, short for Dong Regu, which is actually the region in Busan that he's from. Busan, in case you are really bad at geography, is the second biggest city in Seoul, a beach city. Hmm. All right, so we have a hippo with glasses on. <laughs> I'm sure what All right. that was about. Hippos are dangerous. Hippos so are deadly, man. He's trying to say DRG is the hippo zerg or something. More dangerous well, than water than on land. DR DRG is actually He's so deadly that he has to trick people into thinking he has bad eyesight by wearing glasses. He doesn't need those. Are you kidding me? No. He doesn't need anything. He has the overmind, man. It's just a big eye anyways. <laughs> All right. So blocking some hatchery. Some hatch blocking action going on. Yeah. Just very standard in these early moments. It is cross spot, so that's going to make DRG happy. This is not a force cross spawn map in the GSL, nor I think in any tournament in the world. I think no one has taken the initiative to make in Tomb Valley force cross spawns yet, uh, which probably I bet you will actually happen next season. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, it's you know when they're closer positions, these timing attacks uh, against Sir can be pretty fearful. But as is, this is uh, going to be a better situation for DRG. Now this might be a map DRG wants to all in on if he's going to mix in some all-ins for the series because historically, man, he does not like this map. He hates it. He vetoes it when he has a veto. Uh, he has said multiple times that he does not like this map for Zerg. You know, the beauty of our finals is how many games we give the players. It's one thing to cheese out one guy, you know, all-in this guy, um, play a standard game against this guy because you only have to win two out of three games. Yeah. But here, you have to win this marathon. You have to win four games. 
yeah. and on so many different oh, maps man. as well. You actually just, you're giving me a, a brain gasm right now, Tasteless. Think about this, guys, right? I've been told I'm pretty good. A best of five is always going to seem closer than a best of seven, unless the best of seven is unbelievably close. Because a best of seven, as Tasteless just said, you know, it gives them so many games to prove their skill. That's why we have so many one-sided GSL finals, as opposed to finals for other tournaments, which sometimes aren't a best of seven, sometimes they're best of five or something, and we're like, wow, that was so close. But guess what? 3-1 is really close in a best of five a lot of the times. You're like, oh, wow, he almost took another one of those games. It was almost yeah, if like that all in had worked, you know. Yeah, but hey, in actuality, good. one of the players might be twice as good as the other. He just loses a game, right? Right. Whereas in a best of seven, if one of the players is way better, it's going to show more. It's very a one, Even a 4-2, it's like, well, gosh, man, that was not actually all that close. But DRG, he likes to put on close finals for us. It's one of his favorite things to do. Thank you, DRG. Mm -hmm. Okay, so see that third gas time in there? That means that very likely we are going to see a starport. Stargate. Yeah, Stargate. Uh, and that's, that's a great thing for this map. This map, it's very easy for Protoss to get a third base up because of the ramp. Uh, on the high ground. So I would not be surprised to see him go for a Stargate. But also, I wouldn't be too surprised to see something very sentry heavy. Uh, whether he wants to do some sort of crazy push, which I don't really like on this map for Protoss, or a very sentry heavy fake push into a third, both those would be quite nice here. Well said, Artosis. I know we say it all the time, but I'm going to say it again, because I love esports and I love GSL and I love StarCraft 2. Get on Twitter and hashtag GSL again. I know that you know, I'm sure there are some social media experts here. Oh, oh double Stargate. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I know there are some social media experts probably watching. They're probably they probably watching. understand, actually, why it's so, it's so powerful to have GSL trendy. I mean, but to the layman, it might be like, why? Yeah, even the people at Twitter like GSL. Come on. Yeah, that's actually true. Who does? The people at Twitter watch GSL. I know. They're actually really cool. They're probably tweeting about it right now. Oh they better be. They better be added to this. All right, so we have another double Stargate build. This is interesting. It's not what I was expecting for him to do on this map. You're playing a map that your opponent doesn't like. I feel like taking more risks, sometimes a little bit harder. Uh, now, the Overlord does see all four gases, and they finished this time. So he's going to be a little bit more on the ball about what's happening. There's already been a Zella and a Stalker out on the map, so he might be suspecting something like this. A little bit of a premature chrono boost, but that's fine. Two Void Rays on the way. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Phoenixes. Excuse me. Really neat. So he's going to go for a Phoenix build. Will we see the Phoenix range upgrade? I haven't seen it in uh, any games yet in a tournament. I haven't watched every single VOD yet of every tournament, though. So I'll just shut up right now. <laughs> it's, I've had a hectic week. I haven't caught up yet. <laughs> but uh, he's not going to show the Phoenixes at two, probably. Because as soon as you show them, spores start going up everywhere. Maybe a Hydralis den goes down. Well, it's it's the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Oh! Oh, what? I thought he was going to surround it. Yeah, Excuse I thought me. for sure he was going to get that. That, that Zalt must have had butter on him, tasteless. Oh, and an Overlord flew in, so okay. he has shown it. He's triggered it. The Phoenixes have to move out now. There's no yeah, element he, of surprise is gone. He actually saw four, and he saw two more started. So he knows exactly what's going on here. Uh, and a lot of spores on the way. I wonder if we're actually going to see a Hydralisk Den. Against two Stargate Phoenix, I don't like a Hydralisk Den I as don't like much. Because as the first Hydras are piling up, you're going to have like 12 Phoenix. And then you can just start lifting them. And as soon as you start lifting a few Hydras, it gets out of control. Well, for the other thing is, be very Hydras careful. die so fast yeah, once they're picked up. It's Phoenixes, like a queen that actually takes yeah. forever to kill. They're a light unit, so Phoenixes get that extra damage. And oh my god, DRG is not only going Hydralisk Den, but also drops. Wow. So it looks to me, Tasis, this is the old counter. This was happening back as early as early in the beta and a fleet beat. Oh, I'm loving it. We're going to probably see the range upgrade for Phoenixes, but it might also just be a rush up to Mothership. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. So, Well, no matter what, he probably will, if this game goes on for a long time, get a Mothership. Yes, you want a Mothership as the game goes later. As Hive Tech appears, Mothership becomes the Surf Spears. And it looks like the double extractor is now going up here for uh, our Zerg player. Yeah. And I, I don't think these Phoenixes are going to do much damage. I think they, he had a surprise in there and he did not have that opportunity. Yeah. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Jason. Uh, still making them useful, though. You know, just picking up anything, they become yeah. cost efficient over time. Yeah, the Phoenixes, the more you use them, the more they oh. pay for the carriers. Wait and a minute, wait a minute. What? Are you serious? Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. Serious. What am I saying? Right down the prediction. Oh, sick. If he wins a game with carriers, 
in the GSL CODES Finals. After this game, it's no longer a, a big dark mystery, but a, a game that has rules and uh, you know uh, yeah. builds and a meta game and is understood. Oh man, what? He's eat all right. So he's getting all the carry upgrades. He's getting the plus one attack. Let's not forget. Let's talk about how the carrier could be good. Okay, it has the highest damage per second output in the entire game. Uh, it's something that's going to catch your opponent off guard quite often. You know, he has the Phoenixes, so Zerk literally cannot scout. There's no way for him to know that he's going for that. He's making a ton of cannons with his extra minerals to get that third base. Of course, he's going to need cannons because otherwise he can only be built Zelots. He needs to spend minerals for defense. He's got to be careful how many cannons he makes because that's going to be a tell that something's going weird. Yep. I can only imagine right and now David Kim and Dustin Browder watching this right now holding hands. Yeah. <laughs> As we are all about to learn something about StarCraft 2. They're doing it, man. They're doing it. They're high five. It's totally right normal. Now. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I do want to point out, you know, it's one of the cool things about this is that double Stargate build, okay, with those. We don't see that many Hydras. But, but you know there what? is going to be a drop. But the drop, no, the drop may foil everything. Yeah. In fact, the drop probably will foil uh -oh. everything. Uh oh. That was bad. Losing those Phoenixes, he needed those to The purpose defend. of the carrier is just for the element of surprise. Now, I, I don't, we can't check. We don't have a preview computer at this uh, event. But he needs carriers in his main, and I yeah. think if DRG... He's going to lift up, drop in that third. That third base is for sure gone, I would say. Well, this if he drops so in the difficult. main, it's even worse. Yeah, I think he's going to fly right into some cannons here. And he's showing what's going on, and he's just going to drop behind here. He expects four seals. Here he goes. Beautiful move by DRG, just dropping everything everywhere. Probe's going through. Oh, way too many of those carriers going to come out. But at this point, he's going to lose so much. All of his sentries have, in fact, gone down. These carriers, it doesn't matter. Even if they clean up everything here, he's going to lose at least one base in all of his buildings. We'll down never get to know if the carrier surprise strategy is going to work as DRG dismantled this uh, build just too quickly. Unbelievably amazing. DRG with that beautiful move, hitting the front with Hydra's dropping onto sentry defense. This is a map where you make a lot of sentries to defend those ramps and get that quick third while teching a lot. This was a perfectly engineered strategy for this map, for this player. So far, it looks like we're gonna go to game, uh, what is it, number five now, well, and they're gonna be tied. He might actually hold this for a little bit longer, but yeah. I don't think that, in my own personal and professional opinion, that you can really hold the game if the characters have been spotted well, yeah. early on. At this point, Tasteless, he's already getting his fire attacks. We do have additional fire attacks going up for Genius. He is kind of holding, but he's lost all his gateway units. He has no more sentries or anything like that. He's basically relying only on carriers, and DRG at this point making a ton of corruptors. This is just, this is a terrible situation. Corruptors, with or without upgrades, can take out carriers without too much hassle. And uh, go ahead and throw those legs there at where the expansion is. So even if he attacks with those carriers, he can't yeah. do anything. You have to pretty get a rough. cannon there and park the carriers over the cannon and until the cannon finishes and then dude, move he out. lost his forge as well. So it was a perfect move there oh, to burrow good call, those. Good call. So he has to remake the forge, make the cannons. The thing is, when he's making the cannons, he has to stand stuff right next to him because those Zerglings are going to pop up and kill the cannons. Yep. So third base, nope, no more. Uh, Looks like that was Void Ray's you No, he's making more carriers. Oh my god. He just continues to make carriers. A lot of corruptors on the way. Can he get to is you know, my theory is there's some number of carriers that they become too too powerful too much. for it's something just like generally corruptors. nobody a good player never lets you get that many carriers. Yeah, you just you just never get it. People just start attacking you because they're like, well, you just how could you have it? Uh and you know, he's gonna have to build a lot of cannons to sit those over because right now that corruptor number is getting out of hand. A bajillion Zerglings on the way. DRG's on five bases. DRG on five bases? If you're not about to kill him when he's on five bases, guys, he wins. This is, it's, this it's, is DRG it's in It's essentially best. checkmate. It's mm -hmm. economic checkmate. All right, that's a lot of uh, corruptors. That's a lot of corruptors. It's, yes. like, it's like watching those, those squiddy things from the Matrix coming at him. Sentinels, that's uh, right. Oh, oh my god. Well. Nice carrier control, but does it matter? I don't think so. No, that is way too many tastes. It doesn't matter how much damage these carriers do. He may, he may tap out with this yeah. move. Well, as those die, that with it dies all his chances to win this game. I really wonder if, if Genius loses this in, uh, entire series, I wonder if he's going to regret this decision in this game. Without great chances, tasteless, great things are less bound to happen.
Thank you, Hercules. Or, or, dare, oh, King's or dare, dare I say Shakespeare. GG. We are going on to uh, the next game. It's going to be game right. number five. They are tied up right now. I am many excitement. This is DRG exiting his booth. He's like, I want no. It's a best of seven. You've only won. Oh, two. he's going in there and hugging some trash. He's like, get he said, out get out, here. get out. Damn. Well, I am really sad that we didn't get to see the full breadth of strategy that Genius had there, but it was a great move by DRG. It's unfortunate that he lost a lot of Phoenixes, that he didn't see it coming ahead of time. How could he have changed what happened there? He had his carriers down in front picking up overlords. Maybe that helps a little bit. Uh, everything just kind of... The build by DRG, actually, let's just back up and stop talking about carriers. Just in general on that map, you see a bunch of flying units. It's like, yeah, there's there's a good chance that there's going to be a Roach high draw in against that. Okay, when you see right, right. any sort of air units on this map, that's oftentimes the way Zerg is going to play. So what DRG did was he showed something that looked like that. That's going to make more cannons and more uh, sentries. And as you force field the ramp, you can hold that off and suddenly the Zerg player's at a disadvantage. He simply attacked up like that was happening, then dropped on the sentries. The drop upgrade is a perfect counter to a lot of sentries. I guarantee you, DRG has never seen Genius do that. That was actually yes. so, so crazy. Carriers, if, if you're unfamiliar with StarCraft II on a competitive level, they're just not used in, at, at the high level because uh, they cost too much. You have to get interceptors. If the interceptors die, then you know you have to remake them. That yeah, costs more money. The AI of the carrier is much different than in StarCraft That's One as well. That's very true. That's very true. And so essentially, it's one of the very few units uh, in a game as perfect as StarCraft Two that just isn't used because a good player is going to scout you so well and map it out that you're, he's never going to let you have enough carriers. That was a, a one-time strategy. Genius will probably never we use that again. We will not see that again in this series. Oh, That's go, for no. sure. No, we will definitely not see it again in this series, but he had one specific strategy that there's no way DRG had ever seen, and therefore no way that he could prepare it for. And I, I like the thought process. That's a good thought process to have. But let me tell you seven. If Genius loses this series, that little carrier strat is going to haunt him. Especially if he loses it by one game. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, again, that is the map that DRG doesn't like. But it's a good map for that strategy. It's Very just DRG came up with a great strategy for that map and specifically for that game. Yeah, really, really smart uh, play there by Genius, but unfortunately, DRG, like you said, harder to break than Bamboo. Now, what does he have playing this game? DRG, after seeing that game, he's probably saying to himself, well, Genius will just do anything to win. That's he close. actually just does not care. He wants this so bad. Tesos, do you know what's harder to break than Bamboo? Uh... DRG, a small Lego block. Yes, actually, and DRG is harder to break than a small Lego block. You could crash you put your an thumbs airplane on it? into a small Lego block, and you are not going to break that small Lego that block. That is actually an incredibly. Fact, good why don't point. they build an airplane out of a small Lego block? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that wouldn't be big enough for passengers. Would they it? could make it out of Legos, but then they just break apart. You know. That's true. Yeah. But if you made it out of just one Lego block, it's quite a. You paradox. made a big one and you carved it down. <laughs> Nerds from fans. around the world are going to soon see the results of the DRG versus Genius match. Guys, get on Twitter. Make sure to hashtag the GSL. Keep talking about this match. Let's keep it trending as long as possible, as many places as possible. Because we are the nerds and we are the best. And we rule the internet. We do. We do actually rule the internet. The nerds. It's so nice when you grow up and you find out actually the nerds do win. They do win. Sorry, guys. Yeah.